Good morning everybody and welcome to this live webinar uh, about service catalogue for decisions for execution success. My name is Ivanka Menken and I'm the owner and CEO of a company called The Art of Service. And I must admit, if you are in the UK, well done. It's 7 a.m. and you're listening in on this webinar. I mean, that's amazing. Must admit, I have slightly changed my tech. So for those of you who have followed my other webinars that um, I presented in the past, usually I have about 10 to 20 slides and I just talk a lot about the different slides. This time I've decided to do it a little bit different because service catalog is such a hot item and has been for such a long time that I've decided to whack an enormous amount of content into this presentation. So if you do want to have the presentation at the end of this, send me an email. The very last slide will have all my contact details on it. So feel free, contact me, email me, um, go to the website. The slide deck is there for you to use. So let's quickly go through it. Service catalog, basically looking at service catalog and talking with other people about service catalogs, people go like, oh, that's a fad. You know, it's this fashionable thing that everybody sort of kind of talks about. But have a look at the arrows on your screen. The top left hand side service catalog is stable, has been stable. The surges for service catalogs have been stable ever since 2005, 2006. So there's definitely a need and a desire and a demand for knowledge and information about service catalogs out there in the world. So the other thing that people are always sort of talk to me about is, okay, service catalog, what exactly is a service? Well, you may be surprised, but a service is not the same as a product. So when you put together your service catalog, first hint, don't Focus it around products. Focus it around the services that you deliver, around the services that you provide to your um, customers and how you sort of go about the business of providing services. We'll talk about that a little bit later on in the, um, in the webinar. But keep that in mind, a service is not a product. And even the idle version three book, so this is taken from Service Design page 61. IT staff often confuse a service as perceived by the customer with an IT system. Just think about that. What you deliver is not the IT system. What you deliver is the service that the customers and the end users actually utilize through that product through that IT system. So it's not just about the boxes, it's not just about the software, it is not just about the products, it's what you do with the products that makes all the difference. And what's the difference that we in IT have to make? Well, think about the Lexus feeling, and I don't know if in your country, I'm pretty sure there's Lexus cars and same level of service in every country, but I know that in Australia, the difference between a BMW, a Mercedes-Benz, or any other luxury car brand and Lexus is all about service. It's all about the maintenance, the service levels, it's how they make you feel as a customer. So think about that when you talk about IT services. Think about that when you make decisions around IT services. Are we providing the Lexus feeling? Do we wrap our customers into this bubble of comfort, into this bubble of, I never ever want to look anywhere else for any of my IT services because this is absolutely amazing. One word of caution though, because I heard this last week and I actually kind of agree with that, is do not over deliver on your promises. You know how we always say, or oh, exceed expectations? Don't do that. Lexus is very clear. You know exactly the kind of service they deliver and that's what they deliver. So when you deliver an IT service, be clear, manage the expectations. Because what happens if you over deliver on your promises? The next time your customer actually expects the over delivery service level. And that's not written down in your service catalog. So that new employee that you just put on doesn't know about the exceeding of expectation unwritten rule of the game. So be careful. Be careful how you describe your services in your service catalog. Be careful about how you manage your expectations and be careful what 
level of satisfaction you expect to receive from your customers. So there you have it. Last six years, a lot of focus on service catalogs, mainly theory. You have blogs, there's articles, there's white papers, there's training courses. We have the ITIL framework and all the information that is around ITIL framework. But has it really helped us? What is really happening out there in the big bad world? So we asked our clients. We asked a lot of people out there globally. Does your IT group, do you guys use an IT service catalog? And if you do, is it actually a service catalog or is it a product catalog? So let's have a look what they saw. 62% said no. 62% of respondents said no, but oh, I wish they did. We don't have a service catalog. And then the next, the green bracket, 13%, yes, we do have a service catalog, but it's really a product catalog. So you got 75% of respondents that say, really, no, nah, we don't have a service catalog. It's really based around products or we don't have anything like that at all. So all this information, all the stuff we talk about, all the theory we put together in ITIL frameworks, all this sort of stuff, we still have 75% of respondents saying either we don't have a service catalog or it's product based. So maybe if you look at how do we make a service catalog more successful, sort of look inside, look inside your organization, look inside your IT group. Do we really focus, fundamentally, do we focus on delivering services? Fundamentally, do we focus on providing certain and consistent, sustainable levels of services to our customers or are we really product focused? Which is fine as well, just manage those expectations. Just ask the hard questions and answer them truthfully and honestly. So according to ITIL, because that's sort of like the framework that a lot of organizations tend to use anyway, when you start talking about service catalogs, provide a single source of consistent information. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in this presentation. Those of you who are um, database administrators or uh, data analysts, consistent information on all of the agreed services is pretty hard, especially if you're a bit vague and a bit wobbly on what exactly a service is. So it's probably easy to start small. Start small, start with a pilot, um, so that at a smaller level, have that single source of consistent information. Once you have all the kinks out of the system, all the kinks out of the process, then grow it a little bit wider. Because the goal of service catalog and the management around service catalog is to manage the information contained in it. It reflects the current details, the current status, interfaces, dependencies. So that's why I said start small. Start really small because, you know, this is big. Current details, status, interfaces, dependencies. You don't want to start with all your services first up. So that's, I know, it's been said before. Everybody sort of talks about, oh, we need to do a pilot. Oh, we need to start small. But seriously, guys, think about it. Think about the fact that you need to start small. And even when you do start small, everybody in the organization is involved. Um, people are involved in the collection of data. People are involved in um, the description of your services. People are involved in um, how it all puts, uh, is put together, uh, the dependencies. You can't say to a service catalog manager, and this is tip number two, you can't say to your service catalog manager, here you go. You're responsible, you're accountable, you have to do it all. Everybody is involved because you cannot expect a service catalog manager who comes from the management side or maybe from the networking side or maybe from application development to know everything about every dependency between every IT system you use in order to live, deliver that service. So everybody with a different level of expertise needs to be involved in helping put together that service catalog. So don't make it a one-man band, don't make it an 
isolation show, everybody is involved. Depending on the level of expertise you have, if you know a lot about the network, put that into the process. If you know a lot about the databases, put that into the process so you create a product that is holistic and covers everything in your organization. So once you have that, you can start looking at how do we deal with our customers? Is this us? You know, is this the IT organization, the person hiding behind the door, trying to hide from um, the customer, trying to hide from the business people because really you have you don't have the confidence that what's written down in the service catalog is actually something that you can deliver again start small because when you start small with your service catalog you actually have a chance to be confident that you have the ability to deliver exactly what it is that you have written down in your in your catalog so before we continue with um, the theory, I have a question here. How can you stay small if everybody is to be involved? What's the best way to approach this in our organization? We're a major bank with about 350 staff in IT and 20,000 staff in total. Fabulous, fantastic question. Thank you so much for that one. The reason why I say stay small is stay small with a small amount of services, maybe a core service or um, start with the non-critical services so that you can understand how the process flows, that you can understand who in the organization is part of that everybody who's supposed to be involved. Um, the moment you start small, um, even when you, you start with one or two services, uh, you will have a lot of people involved and that's why I said try to keep it as simple as possible because the more people you have involved in the process and the more services the complexity grows exponentially so you really want to have a small pilot and with small I mean a small amount of services almost put a boundary around your service catalog put a boundary around your project and say okay this is what we try to achieve initially so hopefully that answered um, that answered your question. So back to idle theory, business catalog. It's business language. It's almost like a pre-sales document. So t talking about the Lexus experience, what's the color of the car? What's the make of the car? Well, we know the make because it's a Lexus. What, you know what type? The customer view. How fast does it go? A little bit of technical data, but not too much. It has to be very clear again in order to manage expectations it has to be very clear what it is that a customer purchases when they sign on for this pro uh, product and service so it doesn't matter whether you have a subscription based service or a one-off purchase uh, procured service um, it has to be um, clear that um, people the expectations are out there that they know what's going to happen the other side of the things is that every life service eventually and every service that is going to be transitioned very quickly into the live environment will be part of your service catalog. So even though you start small, it will grow once you get the hang of all this. Okay. Then the other side of the coin is, you know, where business catalog is your salesy document, the other side of the coin would be, going back to the analogy of the car, what the workshop would use. How do we technically create this sustained level of service? How do we deliver this service? What kind of maintenance is required? What kind of technology is required? What kind of skill sets and qualifications are required to deliver this service to this level of um, service levels? So that's where all the other processes come into play. Because in order to deliver a service at a sustained level, in order to deliver a service at an expected level, you can't do that with just service catalog management. You need to have your service level managers, your supplier managers, and your technical support processes involved. So don't try to do it all on your own. 
Okay, I have another question. I'm an ITIL expert. I must admit I'm a bit confused by the recent ITIL 2011 changes. What has the ITIL 2011 version brought in regards to changes to the service catalog service level management process? Oh, a lot. Basically, ITIL 2011 has brought in an extra viewpoint and an extra level of um, complexity into your service catalog. So um, it looks at the different levels of your customers, different levels of your end users. To be honest, I decided not to add that into this presentation because I really want to get to the four critical success factors of implementing this successfully. Um, the idle version 3 equivalent of a service catalog um, is complex enough for a lot of organizations looking at business catalog versus technical catalog. If you add in the um, extra layer of complexity for idle 2011, um, yeah, I, I, I made a conscious decision not to add that in because I thought that would add too much confusion at this stage. By all means, like I said earlier, my email address will be on the very last slide. Contact me directly and we can have a debate on it or a discussion at least because um, I'd love to continue that discussion because it's one of my pet projects. So I understand um, it's not the answer you're probably looking for, but feel free to uh, contact me directly to uh, continue that chat. Whether you do ITIL V3 or ITIL 2011 or maybe ITIL V2 or V1 or maybe not ITIL at all, um, change management is really important in connection to service catalog management. So your service catalog has all the information about all the services that you have in live or operational use. So every time there's a change to any of the components that make up that service, you will need to check against your service catalog to see if the catalog is still valid, to see if the service levels mentioned in your catalog are still valid, if the price points in the catalogs are still valid. So make check service catalog a fixed component as part of your change management process. So that's basically what I wanted to say with this, um, this, particular, this particular slide. So, irrespective of whatever framework you use, you need to know how to develop, publish, implement your service catalog. And you can put ITIL based in brackets because you know, it doesn't matter whether you follow ITIL or not. You do need to know how to define your define your IT services, your critical success factors and KPIs. I mean, you can read all these. This is what you would need to know once you go through the implementation of this process. Um, okay. Semantics, but very, very important. My pet peeve with a lot of service catalogs out there is that they are based around features and wants rather than benefits and needs. And remember how we said that the, especially the business catalog is very much around a pre-sales document to manage expectations. Why does this customer or this end user need the service? What are you going to get out of this service? What's going to happen when you utilize this service? That's not just your features and your wants, that is your benefits and your needs. And I know that is sales 101, but everybody is a salesperson. Everybody in IT should know how to sell the services. Everybody in IT should know what the benefits are of the services. If you cannot come up with a benefit, why do you deliver it in the first place? And it can be obscure, it can be a benefit to the IT organization, it can be a benefit um, that supports another benefit, but at least verbalize them and put them on paper. So that's an important component of just going through this process of setting up, um, setting up a service catalog. Okay, another question is, uh, is ITIL the only framework out there that hen has hands-on service catalog material or are there other frameworks we can look to as well? There's definitely other frameworks out there. Uh, there's other guidelines out there. Um, there's standards out there as well. Um, don't, don't, yeah. ITIL is used a lot. ITIL is utilized to, in a lot of organizations and um, it gives 
20, 30 years of historic guidance on service catalogs and how to put it together and, and what you should potentially put in into a service catalog. But don't, don't put your blinkers on. Don't just look at idle because that is what you happened to read in the first place. Look outside, look at COVID, look at um, maybe there's something in um, like a CMMI or a TOGAV or um, the service management, uh, other frameworks. Uh, there's ISO standards around service management and um, service delivery. Maybe you need to look more into um, frameworks and standards outside of the IT organization. Like when you look at consistent level of services, how do they do that in logistics? How do you do that in uh, business areas? How do you do that in a manufacturing department or, or area of organizations? Look outside the scope of just your IT for ideas. And that's probably um, one of the biggest, um, biggest things don't just sit in your own box saying, oh, I'm an IT professional, I just need to look at ITIL because that's the only framework I know of that has a service catalog written in it. There's a lot more out there. Again, last slide has all my email uh, or contact details on it. Love to have another chat on um, ideas on how to sort of spread your wings beyond, uh, beyond IT to improve and better your... Um, your service catalog experience and your service delivery experience. So that that's really what we're uh, what we're trying to achieve. So that sort of sets the context. I know this; it's a little bit idle heavy, but I know that a lot of the audience in these webinar series sort of feel comfortable in that in that area. Let's now step outside of pure idle IT service management. We're looking at a service catalog. How do you create a catalog of services that may contain products, but ultimately is all about delivering your service to the customer and the end user? How do you put something together that actually makes sense and provides value and benefits to your customers? So let's firstly step outside of IT and look at business. How do we create success in businesses? As a business owner, and I am one, have been, you know, for more than 10 years. As a business owner, you look at four areas. You look at your strategy. You have your long-term strategy. Then you look at, okay, how are we going to execute that strategy? How much cash do we need in order to deliver that strategy? What kind of people do I need? What skill sets do I need? What, what attitudes do I need? What are the systems, processes, procedures, and work instructions that I need? And what kind of support do I need? Do I need HR to support me? Do I need IT to support me? Do I need procurement to support me? How can I make my strategy successful? How can I make my business successful? And funnily enough, when you look at the really successful IT organizations and the really successful IT departments within organizations, they have a very strong and clear focus on strategy. They have strong people skills. They have a very strong recruitment uh, policies and processes and procedures. They know how to manage their cash and they execute like clockwork. It's like a military operation. So running a business and running an IT department, running a project management team, um, running a development unit within your IT group, doesn't matter what you do, it all comes down to strategy, people, cash and execution. That's what makes success. That's what makes long-term success. Not just now in the short term like, ta-da, we have a service catalog, look at us being amazing. No, it is long-term success because the service catalog is part of your strategy. You have the right people on the right seats in your organization and you have the cash to create deliver, maintain and support those services so you can execute upon your promises. That is what creates success. So have a, let's have a look at the first one. Number one, this is a very creative spelling. Sorry, my apologies, I did this at four o'clock this morning. Um, obviously that has to be strategy and not strategy. 
I can say that it's English, but it's not just a typo. My apologies. Okay, strategy. IT organization, who are you serving? Are you delivering your services to the business? Are you delivering IT services to the sales department, to the manufacturing plant? Are you delivering your services to the administration team or the finance department? Or are you delivering your services to enable your business to do business? Because that mindset, depending on what you choose to or how you choose to answer this question, that mindset will make a difference. It will make a difference on how you create your service catalog. It will make a difference on what type of desired outcome you have. What is your desired outcome? What kind of budget, budget do you need? How many sales and revenue streams do you need to achieve that? How do you manage your staff morale and workload? And what exactly is customer satisfaction? Because if you said initially that you deliver services to the business, you would measure your customer satisfaction in the business. But if you said, oh no, we actually provide services so that the business can deliver the business to their clients, then isn't that the person you would do customer satisfaction with? Okay, this, um, okay, got two questions. Our main strategy is having all our IT services cloud computed. How does that impact our approach to service level management and service catalog? Which is very similar to question number two. Ivanka, will the service catalog and service level management in general become less relevant now that cloud computing becomes more relevant? Great questions. Remember how I said it really depends on how you perceive your services. Who are you serving? Are you serving the business or are you serving the businesses in business? Because ultimately how you deliver your services, it could be through systems and products that you own in-house or it could be through cloud-based technology and cloud-based services that you subscribe to. Or are you saying, we're here to support the business so that they can do business and we actually encourage the business to get out there and uh, get applications or apps uh, to get out there and sign up to software as a service as long as they discuss it with us so that we can look at um, implications for all our other IT services. So there's different strategies to follow. Personally, and this is really my personal, uh, personal opinion, not based on any research or academic um, studies, I actually think that a lot of business will be quite hurt by signing up to cloud computing services without having the support of their IT organization. So as IT professionals, it is our duty to stay relevant in our industry. It is our duty to understand how service catalog and service level man management, but also processes like availability and capacity management. How do we provide services to the business that enable us to continue to deliver that sustained level of service to them? So I don't think it's going to be less. I think service catalog and service level management remain relevant. The connotation will probably change slightly and the implementation will probably change slightly. But the, the, the benefits of the process and the outcomes of the process will definitely remain the same. You, you just have to think about it differently and that's why I said at the very beginning are we looking at products or are we looking at services? When we look at services, it doesn't really matter whether or not we deliver those services via the cloud or via in-house legacy systems. When we look at products and we have our entire catalog based around products, oh, we're in deep trouble when we start talking about cloud computing because then all of a sudden all your all your assumptions and all your ideas and all, all your setups and your um, caveats, they don't work anymore. Because all of a sudden, 
it's a whole new ball game. It, it's a whole new way of looking at it. Whereas when you, when you think about delivering services from a service perspective, the impact and implication may not be as big. So let's look at the people. So we talked about the strategy. Now let's have a look at people. The people component. Oh, I hope you can read this. People, you hire for attitude, you train for skills. Hire for attitude, train for skills. I'm not sure if you heard that one before. Uh, it's been one of my mottos personally in um, employing staff. Skills are easier to train. I'm not saying easy, so don't gun me down on, on the fact that I use the word easy. Skills are easier to train than attitude. It's very difficult to change a person's attitude. It's very difficult to change who you are. If you are a product-based technical person who loves to code, you will not be happy in a sales role or you will probably not be happy in a service level management role. You can, you can learn the skills, sure you can learn it, but will you be happy in that role? Will you get your job satisfaction and will you provide the best possible service you can? Do you really add value to that role? So look at when, you, when you're hiring, when you're recruiting people for your service catalog process, because we're still talking service catalog, but also for your IT organization because ultimately those are the people that are going to deliver those services. Look at the attitude that you require. What is it that we need? What are the values of our company? What is the way we want to deliver our services? And look at that for attitude. And then secondly to that, look at the qualifications because of course you need skills. Certain skills are easier to train than others. So for some skills you will probably look at um, levels of education, prior education, but not all of them. So keep that, keep that in mind. So a basic skill set for your service catalog manager, for the manager. So the manager who manages the process of putting together, managing and maintaining a service catalog is leadership and management, interpersonal skills and eye for detail. Remember how I said right at the beginning that your service catalog has to be accurate it has to contain all the details of all your current services. That's why you need that eye for detail. Okay, will it make sense? To, oh, we're going back to questions again, sorry. I'm loving all these questions. Thanks, bring it on guys. This is really good. Will it make sense to see ITIL 2012 turn service catalog service level management into a process called expectation management or something like that? I actually think there's going to be ITIL 2013, but that's a whole new, <laughs> um, whole new um, discussion. Uh, we want to be treated the way we are right now by Amazon, Apple and Zappos. Oh, I love that one. Remember how I said don't exceed expectations? Amazon, Apple and Zappos do not exceed expectation. They tell you exactly what it is that, you're delivering, uh, that you, you can expect and they deliver on that. So, will it be called expectation management? Mm, no, I don't think so. I, I think we're quite attached to our service catalog, service level management naming convention, because it is all about the management of service levels. Um, but I do think we have to put more emphasis on management of expectations. And somebody else is asking, do you find attitudes are improving in the current GFC? And somebody else, and it's sort of coming up in the same sort of vein, do you find it's easier to find better staff in the current job climate or just as hard? Um, attitudes, are they improving in the current GFC? Mm, not sure. I do think management of expectation and that whole instant gratification understanding, Gen Y gets it. They understand that when you buy something, you want it immediately, you want free shipping, you want, you know, the whole Amazon, Apple and Zappos type thing. They get that. But flip side of it, is it, is it easier to find those type of skills? 
No, because they're not taught in school anymore and a lot of people have sort of lost contact. I think us, you know, Gen X people, uh, we got a lot to answer for in, in that regard. But doesn't mean that as IT professionals that want to stay relevant and want to stay in touch with our industry, we kind of, we should expect good quality services from our people. We should expect good quality attitude from our people and never settle for second best, ever because we deliver services to our customers and we, um, we, have to, we have to be serious about the quality of our people. Because if we're not serious about the quality of our people, how can we expect our customers to be serious about us? Okay, so back to the slides. Service Catalog Manager. This is all the sort of stuff that you do. Produce the catalog, make sure all the services are recorded, after you've done your initial pilot and you're now going full scale. Everything's accurate and up to date. The only way you can do that is to link it with change management. Remember how I said that? Link it to change management so that everything stays consistent and up to date. Oh, and sort of on the bottom of the slide, information is protected and backed up. That shouldn't be a last minute idea. That should be at the forefront. But. Nothing happens if we don't have the money. So, I'm not sure about you guys, but I've been looking for this little tree all my life. And you can put a pound sign in there or a euro or whatever you want. Fact of the matter is, if anybody has this in their backyard, please let me know. Because I would love a little sapling of it. Um, we don't have a money tree in the back of our yard. So, every product we create, every service we create by utilizing those products, has to be budgeted for. Every service we deliver is not, well, usually it's not a one-off. So when we create a system or when we create an application that supports a service, we need to look at the entire life cycle. And there's that word again, life cycle of a service. What is it going to cost to deliver that service consistently at a sustained level of services within the constraints that we are given. So budget for the service, which includes maintenance, which includes help desk, which include management of expectations, which include merchandise if it's needed and required, which include everything you need to deliver the service. Don't just focus on the products. Don't just say, oh, we need a server and we need a network and we need an application. How are you gonna glue it all together and how are you gonna make it work? That's what you need to budget for. And always budget some miscellaneous stuff that you didn't think was going to happen. Before we go to execution, I have another question. Isn't it better for service owner or service manager to maintain the service catalog rather than creating a role as service catalog manager? I think the reason why you say that, and I love this question by the way, because it really talks, it, it, it sort of absorbs the enormity that it can be to create a service catalog and to keep it accurate and up to date and it also touches on the importance at an executive level and a higher level in the organization on having a catalog of services that is up to date, accurate, out there, sustained, etc. However, it's a, it's a difference between accountability and responsibilities. So the service manager, um, the service manager and the service, uh, what was the other one, the service owner, they have an accountability at a higher level. They have an accountability and an executive level. It's more of that strategy. Remember how I said the four areas is strategy, cash, people and execution. So the strategy, that's where you have your service manager and your service owner involved. But to execute the strategy, you need people that are accountable for certain components of that strategy. That's where your service catalog manager comes in. Okay, let's continue with the next one because there's another question that just came in and I absolutely love that one. But we're going to we're getting to that one in a couple of minutes because I just want to continue with the execution before I go into that question. Okay, execution. 
before you know what you can improve, improve on, know what it is that you're currently doing. What is your current situation? Are you confident that you currently deliver upon your promises? Are you confident that your IT environment is exactly the way it should be in order to deliver the services that you promised? Once you have that, then you need to build the discipline and the structure. And for those of you who have heard me before uh, or have attended any of our um, training courses, I look at the idle framework as a framework to create discipline and structure. So that's what you look for. Create the discipline, create the structure, have your measures and reports in place. That is, I know, common knowledge that is not so commonly executed, but you can't do that if you don't know where you currently are. So get your starting point. And then to be really, 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 really honest, service catalog, it's all about data management. Capture all the information, accurate data on what products are required, what are the interdependencies, what are the relationships, how does it all link together, who owns which part of the components in the systems that are utilized to deliver the service, how do we deal with storage and data integrity, is storage going to be on-site, off-site, what about security, how are we going to deal with privacy issues, all that sort of stuff. Think about it, talk about it, verbalize it. If you don't verbalize it, it will be shoved under the carpet and nobody will ever think about it until things go horribly wrong. So create a draft. That's your pilot. That's your short, the small part that you start with. Discuss that draft with your stakeholders. And note that it doesn't just say customers. It's your stakeholders. That could be more people. That could be your service owner. That could be your service, le uh, your service manager. It could be your CIO, your IT director. Then based on those stakeholders, update your catalog, make it final, and then utilize that one for your SLA negotiation, linking it into service level management. Your delivery method could be cloud, could be direct via in-house systems, um, systems and products, but use the step-by-step -step structure. Have this structure, create the discipline to have a draft before you discuss it with your stakeholders and don't just sit there with a white sheet of paper and go like, well, what shall we do today? No, have a draft, think about it, educate yourself on what's possible and what's not possible. Discuss it, update it, use it for SLA negotiation. And take your time to do it properly because it will take a long time. Rodrigo Flores, everybody who's done everything with service catalogs has run into him at one time or another. Um, the famous business IT alignment happens not by IT people getting savvy about business, but by business getting IT'd. Poof! The job migrated into another job. He said this early last year. And this is really what we need to think about when we think about, oh, there's an app for that. Can't I just get a SaaS solution? Can't I just use cloud computing? Why, why do we need to wait 18 months for uh, a project to finish? What can we do in the meantime? So think about that. And the simplest are the best. So keep it simple. Common sense is fundamental. Don't try to be clever. Start small, have a solid execution and Take it step by step. So have that structure, have that discipline. Oh, we're going back. Ooh. Yeah, so have the KPIs, and I realize I'm going quite fast, but you can read this when you get the slide deck. Structure is important. Look at your tools, have it all in there, and then have your business structure um, ready to go. So it's really all about how do you want to make this service happen? How do you want to deliver the service? How do you want to remain relevant to your clients? How do you want to make sure that whatever we do is successful? So the four key disciplines, execution, people, cash, and strategy. And when you have those four areas covered off, you can look at, okay, how are we going to do this execution? What kind of framework are we going to use? How are we going to utilize the tools that we have? 
what kind of people do we need, etc. So that's really all I had in slides and that's probably the main message I would like to um, give to you. Um, question. Ivanka, don't get me wrong, love your slides and prepared presentation, love to listen to you answering questions, yay! Um, where is service management five years from now, bearing in mind that everything's going mobile and somebody else actually asked about bring your own machine? Um, yes, it's about the service. It's about the service, it's about being connected, it's about that instant gratification. Can't disagree with you on that one. It is a reality. It's already a re reality. If I look at my own company, that's what we do. Service management will remain relevant. Service management will remain important. It will just, the structure will change. So I'm really sorry guys, I have to cut it off here. Feel free to email me. As you can see, there's all my contact details on the slide. Feel free to talk to me directly. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I'm all over the place. Um, don't be a stranger, love to talk to you and thank you so much for being part of this webinar.